Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are continuing our streak of solving interesting previous year questions on direct memory mapping. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now in this session, we are going to discuss about this question. It came in GATE Computer Science 2006 paper. Now before getting into the question, I would like to take the liberty of informing you all very interesting facts regarding the type of COA questions that are generally asked in GATE or in any other competitive exams. Some of the times, the questions are bigger in size, but we need not worry because that's actually a blessing in disguise. Because the bigger the questions, the more the information is provided. All we need is the clear conception about the topic. Also, some of the times, the concept from different subjects are merged into a single question. Just like this one in here, looking at it, we can clearly tell the concepts of COA and programming made a fusion in here. And in my opinion, that's truly beneficial. Solving questions like these actually help us have a clear understanding of how the different subjects of computer science are interrelated from a broader perspective. Now, let's get to the question. A CPU has a 32 kilobyte direct mapped cache with 128 byte block size. That means the size of the cache is 32 kilobytes and the block or the line size is 128 bytes. Suppose A is a two dimensional array of the size 512 by 512 with elements that occupy 8 bytes each. That clearly means A is a 2D array with 512 rows and 512 columns where every element is going to take 8 bytes. Now consider the following two code segments which are written in C. So this one is P1 and this one is P2. So P1 and P2 are executed independently with the same initial state. That is, the array A is not in the cache. So initially the array A is not in the cache and I, J, X, that means this I, this J and X are in registers. Let the number of cache misses experienced by P1 be M1. So this one, when it will be executed, the number of cache misses, we are terming them as M1 and that for P2 be M2. So for this P2, the cache misses is going to be M2. Now we are to find out the ratio between M1 and M2. So let's find out the M1 first. Now the cache size is given as 32 kilobytes, which is nothing but 2 to the power 15 in terms of byte because 32 is 2 to the power 5 and kilobyte is 2 to the power 10 which results in 2 to the power 15. Now the block size is given as 128 bytes which is nothing but 2 to the power 7 because 128 is 2 to the power 7. Now we can easily find out the number of lines inside the cache which is 2 to the power 15 divided by 2 to the power 7 which is 2 to the power 8 because 15 minus 7 is nothing but 8. So 256 cache lines are there in the cache starting from the cache line number 0 up until the cache line number 255. Now we already know our two dimensional array is going to have 512 rows and 512 columns and this is the conceptual representation of the array. Now it's also mentioned in the question itself that the size of each array element is 8 bytes or 2 cube bytes. Now let's figure out how many elements we can store in each of the cache lines which is 2 to the power 7 divided by 2 to the power 3 because the line size or the block size is 2 to the power 7 and the size of each element is 2 cube which is nothing but 2 to the power 4 that is 16 elements we can store in each of the lines. Now let's figure out the number of lines needed to store each row of the array. That means if we want to store this entire row inside the cache, how many lines we would be needing. Now if you can observe, every row has 512 elements in them. So 512 divided by the number of elements per block or line. That means in each line we can store to the power 4 that is 16 elements. Therefore. 512 divided by 2 to the power 4 which is nothing but 2 to the power 9 minus 4 because 512 is 2 to the power 9 which results in 2 to the power 5 which is 32. So during execution in order to store this entire row we will be needing these 32 lines starting from the line number 0 up until the line number 31. Now coming to this code segment P1 the outer for loop that is the for loop with i variable is used for handling the array elements row wise. Whereas 
The inner for loop, that is the for loop with the variable j, is used for handling the array elements column wise. When p1 is executed, due to the orientation of i and j, the array elements will be referenced row wise. Therefore, when ARR00 is referenced for the first time, we know the array is initially absent from the cache, so it will be a compulsory miss. Then again, due to the mechanism, as we can store 16 elements in one cache line, the entire group of elements starting from the array element 00 up until 015 will be placed into the cache line number 0. Therefore, when the array elements 0, 01, 0, 02 up until 0, 015 is referenced, they are going to be cache hits. Thereafter, when the array element ARR 016 is referenced, it's again going to be a compulsory miss. Again, due to the similar mechanism, the group of array elements starting from 016 up until 031 will be placed into the cache line number 1. Now we already know, in order to store this entire row, we will be needing 0 to 31, that means 32 cache lines. And in these 32 cache lines, the first one will always be the compulsory miss. Therefore, cache miss per row is going to be 32, and there are 512 rows in the entire array. Therefore, the number of misses experienced by P1, that is M1, is 512 multiplied by 32, which is nothing but 16,384. Therefore, the value of M1 is 16,384. Now, let's observe P2. Now, in case of P2, the orientation of i and j has been reversed. That means, in place of i, now we have j, and in place of j, we have i. That means, during execution of P2, the array elements will be referenced column-wise. Now, when i is 0 and j is 0, the first element of the array, that is ARR00, will be referenced. And due to the independent execution of P2, again, the cache will be empty, and it will be a compulsory miss. But due to our mechanism, the group of elements, ARR00 up until ARR015 will be placed into cache line number 0. But those will not be of any use. Because with the incremented value of j, that is j++ will result in 1, the next referenced array element is going to be ARR10. Since it's absent in the cache, it's again going to be a compulsory mess. So, due to our mechanism, the array element 10 will be brought into the cache. But along with that, the entire group of elements ARR11 up until ARR15 will again be placed in the same cache line 1. Now there are 512 columns in the entire array and due to the modified orientation of i and j in P2, the number of cache misses per column is again going to be 512. Therefore, the number of misses experienced by P2, that is M2, is 512 multiplied by 512 which is nothing but 262,144. Therefore, the ratio between M1 and M2 is 16,384, that is the value of M1, by 262,144, which is 1 upon 16. Therefore, the answer of this question is option B. So, that was the session, guys. I hope it was useful to you. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.